Hi Crafty Creators! Welcome back to Floss Chew. As always, you guys are such genuine gems for joining me. Thank you so much for coming along today. A huge welcome back to my returning subscribers and viewers. You guys absolutely make my day every time you drop a cheeky little like or write a comment out so that we can have a chat downstairs. It absolutely warms my heart. And a huge hi, hello, how are you to everyone that might be new and have just found me. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you like what you've seen so far and you found a reason to stay and hang out with all of us. My name is Miss Chloe and this is my little corner of the internet where I get to share all things cross stitch with you guys. Today is a normal update kind of day. I've got some projects to show you. I have had a lot of new starts. Looking at my table in front of me, I think there is one carryover project from last time and everything else is brand new. Um, so you wouldn't have seen or heard of them before. But sometimes that can be a bit fun, right? That can be fun. So I have so many things to share with you today. I have one work in progress, we might start there. You guys know what I'm gonna pull up. You know who she is. We've got the scary sampler from Beth Twist. And this is how far I got you guys. Look, here it is, nice and close. You can see all my minders there. They're all from the usual culprits. We've got Ginger Stitch. We've got Black Needle Society. But most importantly, we've got a lot of stitching done. So that little black mass there, that's all lines. That is the start of the Death Star. We've gone over halfway around our border, so we're almost there. We're almost there with these heads from Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Um, I've got to put in little aliens on them. Those are what the big gaps are for. And the quote is completely done. I am loving this so much, you guys. This has been a blast to stitch. I am doing this with my girl, Amy. Um, we started it together. We are doing a salad. So on the 13th of each month, we pulled this out for five days. As I did miss a month, I had an extra five days in the hole. So I have now paid that. We have paid our stitchy tax. We are up to date. Life is good. Life is good. Um, and I'm loving this so much. Since I've been sharing it, I have had a few people reach out to me. I know that Liz has started this because we're stitching it. And I know that a few other people have said they're gonna buy it because they keep seeing mine pop up. You guys have been really sweet telling me how nice it is to see this one come to life and how much you're enjoying it. So I already can't wait for the 13th of this month because we are now in April. Um, and you know what that means once the 13th hits? Five days of scary sampler. Five days of scary sampler. I'm loving how small it is. This is gonna be so cute to frame and put up. I'm definitely gonna have room for it. I am working on a 28 count even weave from Zweigart and this is light mocha. So it's like a parchment color and I'm absolutely loving it. This is my first go at using a scroll frame too. So I still need to get tensioners for the sides. This, this flap, this is bugging me when I stitch. Um, I was told if you put needle minders on the edge, it like pulls it out. But so far that's not been working for me. So if you are a scroll frame person and you know how to tension this without me having to go buy like clips and stuff, let me know your secrets. Let me into the club. I need to know what we're doing because I have zero idea, zero idea. And I don't really want to sew it in because then I will definitely have to move the work. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's so much effort. Oh yeah, this is where she's up to. Sorry about the cut there, guys. I have had a bit of a cold since going on retreat, so I've got the coughs today. There may be a few rough cuts. Maybe a few rough cuts, but that's all right. But yeah, I would like to get the flowers done so that I'm up to date um, and just have all of the border finished because I think that'd be really nice. Really nice. And then I can move on from the Demogorgon heads <laughs> because I'm just a little bit done with them. Um, if you are stitching this pattern, don't, just rely on the spacing from one page. Do not make that mistake. Uh, there are slight differences in a couple of the Gorgon heads. So some of them have a green bit that go all the way up. Some of them have a green bit that go some other way up. Some of them are further down than others. Some of them are further across than others. So definitely check your chart. Do not make that mistake because unpicking on 28 count one over one, mm, not fun. Not saying you have to do it on that. Unpicking on anything is not fun, but especially that, not okay. 
not okay you guys just double check your chart they are all slightly different <laughs> just to keep you on your toes i think um but otherwise i'm really loving the chart i think it was a great design from beth twist and i cannot wait to get back to it so hopefully next month or this month oh it's gonna take a bit to get used to that so hopefully this month i will be able to get all of the flowers finished all filled in and ready to go so I would like to also finish the Death Star. I think that's a very manageable goal. And then I can put in the alien heads because I think they're really cute and they just hang off the flowers. Okay, the next piece that I worked on is itty bitty teeny tiny. And here was my palette cleanser between 28 count and 28 count. You'll see later. But I stitched a baby cubone, you guys. This is completely finished. It took me an evening. This is from Black Bolt Stitching. And I think he's just so sweet. Cubone, for those who don't know, is a Pokemon. He is my favorite Pokemon. He has always been my favorite. I have a folder full of Cubone cards. I have a little tiny Cubone cut out in my background, courtesy of my friend Lachlan. Um, and I just love him. He just sits up here by the sea. He is a new addition. I got him for Easter. But yes, so it took me about three to four hours to get it done. I made a few changes, surprise, because I always make a few changes. So I have actually added in an extra leaf on this plant because I thought it needed another one. I was debating putting another one here, but then I think that'll be a little too much. Um, but I really love it. It was a little freebie off the website. So I'm really glad that I went and found it. I love Cubone and there just are not enough Cubone things in the world. Um, I have the little Cubone up there. I've got a couple of plushies. I've got this guy now, which is excellent. I am already stitching it again. And I have a little Cubone toy that my friend made into like a little diorama with rocks and plants in a, in a Pokeball. And I absolutely love it. Lachlan also made me a Cubone cutout, which is just phenomenal. It was my Christmas present and it could not have been more perfect from them. I absolutely love it. So on this one, I do need to finish it because we have, as always, a million yards of leftover fabric because on the thing, it's, it's a lot bigger because of the number of squares. This is a 14 count black Ada. Um, if you want tips for working with black, let me know and I will film a little video when I'm doing it again because I am stitching him again. Um, I found out quite by accident that on this size, it will fit perfectly in the top of the Pokeball display that Lachlan made me. So I am going to go ahead and stitch this guy again and then stitch it onto the hoop and remove the outer hoop and then fit it into the Pokeball. But I really wanted to have one that was separate so that I could put it up because Cubone is just so cute and so sweet and I love him so much. Um, so if you see any Cubone patterns out there, give a girl a shout because uh, I will do them. I will do them all. Um, but yeah, this is my little keybone and I love them very much. Next up, I've got a new start to show you and it's actually one that I started today. I started it on my lunch break at work and I'm so excited. You guys, how cute is this? This is the celebrate all year for this month. This month is astrology month. So we are getting planets, we are getting stars, we have the sun. I am so excited. You guys know I am obsessed with stars and things. I'm sure you've seen all the t-shirts. I have all the star shirts. And now I have a little pattern to work on that's got stars and planets on it. And I'm so keen, so keen. So I have, I have done about 700 stitches today and I will do more once I'm off here because I am so jazzed about this. This has been so much fun. Katie did an awesome job designing it. I love it so much. Um, this came out obviously on the first. It is from the Black Needle Society's Celebrate All Year Sal, and it's just perfect. It's so perfect. It's so cute. Um, so you guys will remember that we have had so far, we've had three months. So we have had Hot Tea Month, we have had Pie Month, and we have had Umbrella Month. So now we've got space. We've got space. I'm so keen to see what these other months are. I'm racking my brain and like looking up holidays, trying to work it out. And I just can't, I just can't. It's so cute. It's so cute. So I am doing this one on a 16 count Navy Ada. And this is also from Zweigart. 
and again our needle minders are on here they are from ginger stitch they are from the black needle society themselves our counting pin and our grime guard come from frog and tink um and i absolutely love them i think this grime guard's really really cute although it might be up for a change soon it might be up for a change soon i feel like i need a slightly darker one to go with the darker fabric i don't know do you guys do that do you change your guard to match your fabric because i'm feeling like i need to <laughs> i'm feeling like i need to so i'm gonna have to get some more um but this stitch has been so much fun it comes up so quickly i think the biggest part is this sun and everything else is just these little tiny planet motifs and they're so cute so so far i have only worked with a few colors because they overlap into other things as you can see and uh for anyone wondering this is a whiteboard it is functional <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm really loving this one. I'm hoping to have it finished this week so that in the next two weeks I can show it to you all done and then we can be ready for the following month. We will have three months of this navy Ada, which is just really pretty and really nice to work on. And then we'll change colour again. So I'm hoping that all of the stuff has the really bright colours on it for these months just to really make them pop um, and that they're kind of heavier than the browns and all of that that are a little bit more like tonal towards this sort of color um but yeah that's where she's up to and i'm loving her thank you katie the next thing i have to show you today is kind of a big deal it is four back-to-back -back starts that are all joined together and if you watched my unboxing the other day you know what i'm on about are you ready are you ready? Look! I started them all! These are the Stars Hollow banner patterns from the lovely Katie Landers over at the Black Needle Society for the retreat that we had over Easter weekend, which is the weekend just past. Here is a close-up because these are teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny and hard to see. So starting over in the corner, we have Spring, and that's got the lighter color, the orange and the green. Next to that, we have summer, which is the sort of creamy orange, the light blue. Next to that, we've got autumn, which is like a navy color and then a red and then a dark blue. And then finally, finally, we have winter. Winter is looking fierce because I spent all retreat on it. I started this on the second day. So we had that first half day where we got to do, I think it was like one challenge and a welcome event and then hang out in stitching rooms. Um, my brain is a little fuzzy because I didn't sleep much, but I know I had a really good time on that first day and I got to speak to all my friends and hang out with you guys. And it was just the best time, the best time. Um, I wasn't particularly late at night. It was in the middle of my day. So I really got to go and enjoy and be fresh, which is amazing because I got to chat to everybody and get to know you all on that first day and like scope out the rooms and see who wanted to hang. And it was just the bomb, the bomb. Um, and I got to learn a little bit more about how the events worked and how Bitter Basket worked and all of the things you guys were so, so helpful. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for looking after me. Thank you for confirming what actual things were because uh, I read the guides, but my brain, my brain went straight to Frogwarts, which is a very competitive retreat, not Stars Hollow. And I needed that balance reminder every now and again to go back to chill mode. But after that first day, I did get completely into my groove and I got to start winter. So I made it the whole way across the top of the banner in about, I think it was just over two days. Um, to start winter so that I could start winter as soon as the second day of retreat had officially started I clocked into her and we got going so you could see in the close-up there there's a lot of stitches that I've done in that one there's a lot of stitches in her she is so close to being finished you guys I am sitting on 97 percent I managed to hit 90 percent during our closing live ceremony and it just felt so good to get that far in like three days. It was insane. It's over 8,000 stitches that I managed to put in in that time, which is just 
mind-blowing like if you told Chloe at the start of her stitching journey one day you'll be doing 8,000 stitches in a few days and you'll think nothing of it your arms won't hurt you won't be tired you won't feel like you've pushed yourself I would laugh at you I, I would just laugh at you and be like no no my arms hurt after like a thousand and I give up for the day not anymore girl not anymore not anymore. Now we are a successful stitcher and we can do all the things, all of the things. So I was hitting just over 2000 stitches every single day and I was absolutely loving it. Like I said, I didn't push myself in the challenges, but I was still getting respectable numbers and pretty high numbers at that, according to our grader. Um, shout out to Eunice. So I was, I was told that my numbers were looking really good and I was really, really happy to hear that they were still sitting, you know, just over the 200 mark for each hour. So 200, 250, 225. I think my high score was 280 um, on this particular retreat. And of course that was the first challenge on the first day. It's always the best one. I don't know why, it just is. Um, so I was really, really happy with that. So the reason that we're at a standstill and I haven't finished it before this video, because I would have liked to have finished it before this video, but I did not quite get there, is because I am waiting on this color that goes around the candy cane. It's on back order. It's on back order, so I cannot finish her yet. But I have three other patterns to work on. As you can see, all the way out here, there's plenty to do. Plenty to do. I think I might start with autumn next, just because it's next to it and it's already nicely squared up for me. So I don't have to move the cue snap because we all know how much that sucks. Never lines up straight. Mm -mm. So I'm going to work there and then I'll move across to summer and then I'll do spring. So hopefully I will get a nice run going on these and I'll be able to put in a little bit. Now, this one itself is done on a 28 count even weave Zweigart. This is just a, a plain white. Um, it's from their base set. I don't think it has a real name. I know it said Brittany on the packet, but I think that's the type of even weave it is. I'm not 100%. Um, I did pick this up at JK's and I eagerly awaited for it to arrive by like consistently checking my mailbox. My neighbors must have thought I was nuts because I was out there like three times a day. I have been working at home and I was just like, is that the mailman? I'm gonna go check. Whoop. And yeah, three times a day I would check morning, afternoon and night because our postie does not have a specific time route anymore. He comes whenever he feels like it. So... I needed to know, I needed to know. And as soon as it came in, I started. I messaged Liz and I was like, it's here, I'm going, let's do spring. Um, Cause it came with all of my fancy floss too. This is the first project where I have actively gone and bought all the fancy floss and I have loved using it. Um, you can see in a couple of them, I'll stick the close up back in for you. You can see in a couple of them, I have worked up and down on the piece rather than side to side. So all of my fancy floss is striped because that's where the dye lots came out. Now, if you use fancy floss often, I would love some tips on how you use it. So I know it's all one stitch at a time and that's very much what I did with this piece. Everything was done single stitch on single stitch for Fancy Floss rather than the DMC because the DMC, it doesn't matter. It's a solid color. But I would love to know what your tips and tricks are because some people do this and it looks really blended. Some people do this and it makes great shadows and detail. And I just don't know what I'm doing. So if you could tell me what your tips are, I would love that. Absolutely love it. Um, because I would like to try Fancy Floss again and I would like to get better as I go. In this piece, I think I'm going to stick to all the same sort of movements, so up and down in the blocks, just so that they all look the same as winter, because if sort of the top banner and winter are all the same and then the others are all different, it's going to look a little funny. So for this piece, I'm going to stick with it, but I have plenty of fancy floss left over from winter to play with. So if you guys have tips and tricks, your best ways to get the fancy floss to sort of look a little less blocky, that sort of thing, definitely hit me up let me know drop your hints down below let me know all the secrets um because i am very interested in learning to work with this some more it's been just so much fun and i've loved watching how it stitches it's just been excellent now 
in winter I made some changes. They're only tiny, but I felt like I could put my own personal spin on the piece and I always love doing it. I love just throwing in a little something just for me on the side to make sure my piece is personal and it's not the same as everyone else's, even though I know that so many of us have stitched it together. Um, I just think it's really nice to have something that makes yours uniquely yours. So on my piece, I have replaced Luke's mittens. Here is a close up of winter so you can see what I'm talking about, obviously, right? So I've replaced Luke's mittens because the color was just getting lost. Um, there is some variegated floss near him and then in the blue, it was just too close to the white. So he had very, very light gray mittens on. Those are gone, he's got hands. He's got hands because I couldn't see his mittens and it was creeping me out. It was creeping me out to think that like Luke had sucked his hands up into his shirt. I don't know. It was weird. Either that or Carl was hungry for hands and took them. If you know llamas with hats, you know what I'm talking about. I have also changed Lorelei's skates. They were also completely dissolving into the same dye lot as my white. They were not showing up. So I actually used some offcuts from my Oort bowl <laughs> to fill those in so I can't tell you the colors. Um, unlike Luke's hands, whose Luke's hands obviously match his face. Um, Lorelei skates, I used a very light blue that I found in my Oort box because it was just long enough to do two skates. And then I also used a slightly darker gray or silver in from my Oort's box and I put them in and you could see them a lot better. So they're not super, super strong colors, uh, but they do stand out, I think, just enough, just enough to make sure it's a little bit different. And then our snowflake section. So you've got that beautiful blue and purple. Um, it reminds me of like an Aurora Bo Borealis. It's really cute, obviously in those shades. Um, there, the snowflakes in there were supposed to be a light blue. And I think it was the same blue as Lorelei's top, if I remember correctly. But again, it just was not standing out because of the dye lot in my fancy floss. So it, only, it won't come up very well on camera, unfortunately. Instead of going with the color that was called for, at about 4 a.m., just before a challenge, my brain went, it would look really good in light effects. You have E5200 in light effects. You should just do it. Don't worry that light effects is your most hated thing to stitch with. Or that you're doing it over one on 28 count. Or that it's 4am. It'll be fine. Spoiler alert, it was not fine. Chloe was not okay. Chloe had a time. Chloe had a time. That challenge had the worst numbers. It was just over 200. It was like 203. But I did it. But I did it. And I'm really, really happy I did. No, she's not coming up. She's not coming up. I am sorry. She does not wish to do that today. Um, but I'm really happy I did it because in real life, it looks so good. It's worth every stitch and every little stress out because the thing split, right? It makes me so happy. It looks like I've stuck little crystals to my work. When the light hits it and moves past it, you get that little like snow feel. So I think it was the perfect change out and the right call. Um, and I'm really, really glad I did it because I just love how it looks. I love how it looks. It makes me so happy. So those are all my starts. Those are all my starts. I would like to get a little bit of work done on autumn this month. So in two weeks time, hopefully I have done a little bit. I'd really like to put in Rory's uniform. Her Chilton skirt is down the bottom and it goes next to Lane's cheerleading outfit. So I would like to put that one in because I think that would be really fun really fun to get that in. Hopefully next time we meet, I will have started that one or finished that one up so that we've got the skirt in. I think that's a very achievable goal. It's quite chunky, just like Lane's dress was, but it's a good stack of the piece. It's, you know, a nice aim. And I think, I think I can do it for you guys. I think I can do it for you guys. So we'll see how we go in the next two weeks. That's all for now, but I did get a little bit of haul. 
just a little bit, um, which I'm super excited about. So my good friend Liz over at Stitched by Liz sent me a message one day and just said, hey, Crafty Threads is de-stashing some even weave. It's on sale cheap. You should have a look. So I bought it. <laughs> so I bought it. Um, so I've got three cuts. These are all Lugana. These are all Zweigart. Um, but they're super pretty. <laughs> they're super pretty. So the first one is blush, which is just a really light pink. And I think it's going to be a great neutral to work on. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then I got Misty Green which is this one. Again, I think that's gonna be really cool. I would really like to do some things with brightly colored flowers on them. So I thought getting a green was a really good move because it'll look nice as a, as a um, background for that. And then I got a vintage blue and this one's kind of marbly. So I'm excited to use that one too. I think it could be really good for a mermaid or something like that. I do have the Beauty and the Beast pattern that Black Needle Society sent out in their September box, I want to say two years ago, and I've just never found fabric that I thought would work for it, but this, this might be the ticket. This might be the ticket. Um, this is a 32 count, but my others are 28 counts because I've become obsessed with 28 count over one lately, and I feel like I need more of that in my life. So I've bought a few bits of fabric now and I can I can get on that. I can start making more things that are really miniature and cute. I don't know what else I'm gonna miniaturize, but there's gonna be a few things. I got a little bit more stash. I got two Mill Hill kits. Look at these. These are Christmas ones. These are obviously gonna be done for the backdrop at Christmas time. Maybe not this year, maybe next year. <laughs> Um, but a lady was de-stashing these on the de-stash group that we have on Facebook and I jumped on them because they were only about three or four dollars each and I know Mill Hill kits can be about 15 to 20 dollars if I've seen them in stores um, and these ones have a lot of beads. I might have made a mistake. This one has three packets of beads in it. Like three full baggies. This one just has one. This one might be, I'll start with this, <laughs> start with this. Um, but they're really cute. So this one is naughty and has a reindeer and a wreath. And this one is a full Christmas wreath. <laughs> and it's really cute. It's really cute. Um, but I might have trouble with the beads. I have not worked on perforated paper before. I have worked on plastic canvas. I have worked on fishing line canvas. I have worked on Hessian. I have worked on fabric, but never paper. Again, if you have tips for paper, let me know. Let me know if you've done these before, because I now have four of these, because I also have two snowflakes that my nan bought me. So I need to stitch those. <laughs> I need to stitch those. And then I'm looking at putting them all up in the background for Christmas. So we will have the little Santa I finished last year, the snowman I finished this year, these two and two snowflakes and I think that is a really good little you know upgrade to the decorations for Christmas so yeah I'm hoping to put them all up in the background and just kind of move things around at Christmas time so I've got to make a bunch of ornaments to share with you guys you know um I'm very excited to do them I think they're gonna be a lot of fun that's everything from me this week that I've worked on and I've received I am so keen to get going and finish the astrology piece. Hopefully I can do that for our next update. And I am also really keen to work a little bit more on the Stars Hollow banner. As I said, I'd love to get Rory's skirt in and just have the two girls standing next to each other. I think that's really cute. I love that they're together. But until next time, you guys, you stay safe, you be happy, and you craft something beautiful. I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye.